in that sense, you will be able to see the Word of God for yourself and know that what's being said is the Word of God. So I'm going to give you a brief moment to turn there uh, because, again, uh, we don't want anyone to get lost as we travel down this spiritual highway that we'll be journeying down this morning. And while you're turning there, we're going to enter into a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you this morning for your mercy. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you this morning, God, because you are God and that you are God alone. We ask in this morning, O oh God, that you continue to wake up your children everywhere, Father God, throughout this land, Father God. Wake them up, Father God, setting them free from the hurt and harm and danger they may have experienced throughout the night as well as the day prior, Father God. We're looking into this day, Father God, because this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I ask now, Heavenly Father, that you will anoint me, Father God, to bring forth the word, your word, Father, which is able to save our very soul. I pray to Heavenly Father this morning that those who listen to this service this morning and hear this word this morning, that it may be able to touch one in a mighty and spiritual way that they have never been touched before. We thank you and we praise you and we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Again, we're going to the book of uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse 13, and we'll be going from 13 to 16. The title of the message at this present moment is called... This is your season, but being disobedient will disrupt your season. This is your season, but being disobedient will disrupt your season. See, there's a time and a place for all things. A uh, proverb tells us that, Ecclesiastes rather tells us that. There's a time and a season for all things. So there's a time and a season for you to be blessed, but because of disobedience, because of circumstances, because of things that, 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 that may happen in your life, because of, uh, instead of going right, you choose to go left, that can be a disruption in your season. There could be a good harvest coming up, but because of too much rain, uh, too much sun, uh, maybe even the deer is out there in your crop, eat it up. It disrupts what mm. will grow and come forth. So in life itself, in our spiritual life, we have a season that's been set up by God. See, God want our good. He, he, he don't want us to get bad. He want our good. But we can disrupt what God has in store. Mm -hmm. They say, well, what God got is going to happen. Yes, what God has put in place, he put in place. But you can disrupt what God want to do for you. And God will not force anything on you. He, he's not going to force anything on you, but you can disrupt it. It's simply like going down the highway. you going down the highway, okay, you're going down the highway, minding your own business, and all of a sudden there's a detour. Your path got disrupted. What God has for you, it is yours. But you can make a choice not to receive it. This is your season, but being disobedient will disrupt your season. Exodus chapter 3, began at verse 13. I'll read it, please. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come into the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, mm -hmm. and, they sh and, they sh and they shall say to me, What is, what is his name? Mm -hmm. What shall I say unto them? Okay, listen, uh, beginning off right here, again, because we said that when God has something for you, he has a season set up for you, you can interrupt it. As we read right here with Moses is speaking, Moses said unto God, in other words, is it possible to talk to God? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's possible to talk to God. Moses talked to God, and, and so we can talk to God likewise. But one thing about talking to God is this. We must be consistent. Mm -hmm. We must be consistent in our talk and our conversation with God. But Moses asked God, he said, when the people of Israel or the children of Israel ask me who you is or who sent me, then what am I going to say? He said, you are going to say to them that I am, that I am. And what? I am the one that sent you. I mm -hmm. sent you. Who is I? I am God, the God of all things, the God of the universe, the God of this season. So I am. He told so now what we want to get into about the disruption part of this right here. But we know that's Moses. We know Moses talking to God. We know God has responded to Moses by saying, tell him that I am, that I am, I am the one that sent you. Read verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. 
And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. And he said, I am that I am. And thus so you say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. In other words, the God that that I am, or the God of I am, or the God I am, mm -hmm. has sent you. Or the God that I serve has sent you. The God that I believe in has sent you. He's the one who sent me. So say this to Israel. He said, I am what I was, and I am. I was and I am. I was before, I am at the beginning. But that God that you then is the same mm -hmm. God that I am right now. The God that you will know after the season is the same God I, I am now. So it is your season, and at the beginning of your season, God is telling you that mm. I am, and I am with you. Mm. I am, and I am with you. Now listen, the children of Israel was preparing themselves, this is what God was trying to do, trying to get them prepared, to come up out of Egypt. To come up out of bondage, to come up out of slavery, to come up out of hindrance, to come out of doubt, to turn up out of that disbelief, to turn out of the line, to come up out of the cheek, to come out of the stealing, to come out of being murdered, to come up out of being destroyed, to come up out of being mistreated. He was ready to lead them out of that part into this new season, a season of happiness, a season of joy, a season of fulfillment, a season of prosperity, a season of just being blessed, heavenly blessed. He was getting ready to lead them to that particular season. And Moses was the one to lead them. So he wanted to understand that I am the one that's going to lead you into your new season. I am the one and I will always be that one. I am forever and always the one that will lead you into a better place, a better season. However, let's read on. And God said, moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Mm -hmm. The God of Isaac mm -hmm. and the God of Jacob mm -hmm. have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. So, so he said, here you tell him, because I'm the God of your fathers. I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and I am the God of Jacob. I am these I, that I am. I am the father of your father. Hmm. So in other words, this thing that you're going through right now, this, this, this ain't nothing new to me. The season that you're in is not anything new. It's not anything really difficult. I know where you are, and I also know where I want to lead you to. I want to lead you to a greater season. However, which we're going to get to in a minute, however, you got to understand who I am. I am he who is able. Paul wrote, he said that uh, uh, the Lord will supply my every need. David write that he has a cattle on a thousand hills. So he's able to do all these things. He also writes that if he was hungry, he would not tell us because that's what we can do for him. But he is able to put us, to carry us into our new season. So he said, I am. I am. The Lord reminded Moses to tell Israel that he is the same one, the same one, this one said, he's the same one who spoke to the patriarchs in times old. In other words, he's the same God that spoke to Abraham, the same one that spoke to Isaac, and the same God that spoke to Jason. And we're talking about years and years and years and years and centuries and centuries and, and centuries ago. The same God. Mm -hmm. So I got to understand this here. If other people are being blessed, why can't I be blessed? If God did something for somebody yesterday, why can't he do it for me today? Yeah, people always come up to me. Well, God did this for me, and He did. He blessed me. This and he blessed me. Why can't He bless me? This is your season, but being disobedient can disrupt your season. Amen. So maybe He's not doing the same thing for you because somewhere along the line you got to be disobedient, hardhead, disrespectful, unbelieving, lazy. Lights are days ago, which is lazy, still, still lazy, just like the day, but still lazy. Rebellious, ungodless, all these things. Maybe that's what happened. So he goes on and tells him, he said, I am the same one now that did this. He said, I am that I am. I am that I am. 
that I am would be my name ever. So I'll be out again a strong situation and, and, and meet somebody that's called say, I am. Then God will hear me. You, 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 you need such and such as I am. God will hear you. He will hear he, because he is the great I am. I am will be the, my name forever. He said, he changes not. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever as is written down in the New Testament. He never changed. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. And we look at time in this reality. We're looking at yesterday and today. There's two things. There's yesterday and today. Because there's no tomorrow. This is why, and I know some of us have really never took the time out to study this word, but tomorrow... Tomorrow, the word tomorrow. It, it, can we find that word tomorrow? Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. See, 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 call. tomorrow is a word that is synonymous with future. It, it's synonymous with future. Uh, so, so tomorrow is talking about what can happen, what will happen, what we want to happen, and I've got to wait on it to come. I have to wait on this thing to get here tomorrow. It is autonomy with, it, it has a great association with something that's not. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Listen to it. It has a great association with something that is not. And why is it, is it associated with something that was not? Because we don't know what tomorrow may bring. We can't see tomorrow. Jesus spoke to the disciples. He said, take no thoughts of tomorrow, for you know not what tomorrow may bring, or you know not what a day may bring. So if he tells us to take no thought of tomorrow, then we shouldn't be focusing on tomorrow. What we should be focused on is the right now. Jesus said, he said, he, by way back in Moses' day, he said, I am the same yesterday, today. He ain't said tomorrow. He said yesterday and today. Why didn't he say tomorrow? Now, that's a whole different story, really. That's a whole different summer on tomorrow. We can go, we go somewhere there. But the thing about it is, is, is that we, 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 we know what happened yesterday. We, we went through that mess yesterday. Mm -hmm. And we can identify what's going on today because we're in the present moment. So today is present. It's right mm -hmm. now. Today is right now. So we end this thing right now. But how do we get to tomorrow? Where, where is tomorrow? This is, again, is why we have to look at Scripture. We have to identify the Scripture. We have to identify the Word. We cannot just take things for granted that it is what it is or what somebody told us. Well, I was told that that, that you take one step and he'll take two. I was told that he, mm. he said he, he'll do this, he'll do that. I was told that in the book of, in the book of Hezekiah, so, 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 and so. He wasn't, but the, what you told and what you know is something totally different. Tomorrow is not here. Because when tomorrow come, it will be today. It will be today. So we cannot focus on this tomorrow thing. So Jesus said again right here, right here, when we go uh, talk about he said, I am that I am, and it will be my name forever. I change not. He is the same yesterday, today. And forever. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Not the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Like I said, tomorrow is a different story. That will be a different message that God will bless us with, hopefully, in the future about this tomorrow thing. I, again, I, I, I applaud you to identify with words. Just don't take something at face value. Just don't take something and say, that's what it means, that's what it means. I think that if you think that's what it means, you could be thinking wrong. Mm. Research stuff, find out stuff, seek God on things. And when you talk to God about things, sit down, relax. Basically, I'm going to tell you like this shut your mouth and listen to what He got to say. So many times, again, I, I say it so many times, we'll pray, and as soon as we finish prayer, we jump up, we take off, we get right back to what it is we don't. We don't relax in God and let Him just, just marinate and, and speak to our mind, speak to our heart. And that's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. One time, Jesus prayed, and once He finished praying, He just went on laid down. Why? Because he laid down and he relaxed, right, relaxed himself in the bosom of God and allowed what God, just allow God just to talk to us, speak to us, and resonate with what he had prayed about. That's what we need to begin to do. Have that quiet time, that peaceful time with God. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so we go on. And so we go on. So it, it, it is your season 
But being disobedient will disrupt your season. Read, read on to the next person, please. Go and gather the elders mm -hmm. of Israel together mm -hmm. and say unto them, mm -hmm. The Lord God of your fathers, mm -hmm. the God of Abraham, of Isaac, mm -hmm. and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. Now, now this is what Moses, I want you to listen to again what he's telling Moses because he's telling us the same thing today. Go, 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 do, 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 pray, 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 <laughs> live, 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 laugh, laugh, laugh. He's telling the same thing today. He said, go and gather the elders of Israel together and send to them that the Lord God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared unto you. God is still appearing unto us today. He appeared to us in his word if we just take the time to read his word. He has appeared to us today in pastors and teachers and, 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 and children. He appeared to us in all kinds of ways. But we align things to disrupt our relationship with God. Pick and when up. we align things to disrupt our relationship with God, our season is being disrupted. So, these few verses in Exodus are primarily using what I'm using, what we are using them for today, is to just to get you on the path of what God is saying, what God is doing. Now you say, well, where, where, where's the disruption up there? He was telling Moses about the season that's, that's coming and what are you doing? What's, what's the disruption? Well, we finished so he showed the disruption. Go to Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. Remember now, God has called Moses. And even when he called Moses to tell Moses something, this is a little extra while we get into uh, number chapter 20. Even when he called him, Moses did this a question because that was his question. He asked, well, who am I? I can't speak. I can't talk. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't. I can't. I can't. Act. Well, in your season of deliverance, in your season of prosperity, if you can't, you can't, you won't, you won't. And if you don't, you won't, you won't, you don't, you don't, and you don't get. <laughs> now you ain't got it. So you messed up. So Moses was tomorrow, I can't, I can't, I can't do this, and I can't do that. And God had to tell him, regardless of what you think you can or you cannot do, if I say you can do it, then what? Greater is he who is in you than he is in the world. I am in you, mm -hmm. so you can do all things to me, for me. You can do all things through God. All things. That's what God wants us to understand. So in our season of the deliverance in our season of prosperity, we can get all that thing if we don't allow our season to be right. disrupted. And disobedience will disrupt everything. Everything. Now, in Numbers chapter 20, verse 7, read it, please. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together. Mm. Thou and Aaron thy brother, mm -hmm. and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. Mm -hmm. And it shall be forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. Now listen to what it said. Was that last piece of So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. Okay. okay. All right. All right. And he said, now, now we're over here now. Remember that God called Moses, he spoke to Moses, and told Moses what he wanted to do. So now Moses jumped on board. Moses is off into his season now. He's off into the season of prosperity. He's off into the season of deliverance. He, he, he got the church of Israel. Now they are going. They are, if we keep reading back in Israel, you'll see where he finally got them out. And they come up out of Egypt. They cross the Red Sea. They are walking. They are talking. They are rejoicing. They are doing what God has, God has did all these things for them. So they are in that season of deliverance. They are in that season of prosperity. Prosperity meaning that they are in the season of growth. Mm -hmm. See? They are in that season of growth. So he got them out, now they're moving. Here's the thing here. Now your season can be disrupted. Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. and the Lord spoke to Moses, said, and, and then he goes over, and he said, Take the rod. Take mm -hmm. the rod. Okay? And he said, And you gather me the assembly together, you and Aaron, your brother. See, because even when you when you're going through stuff, you know, people say, I'm going through this thing all by myself. It's nobody that with me, nobody. Else. It's always somebody with you. You just gotta know how to call them. You've got to know they with you. It's always somebody with you. God said, I'll never leave nor forsake you. 
There's always somebody. Which, but when you're going through your thing, your little trial, your little tribulation, you begin to whine and cry, and you don't think nobody with you. But there's always someone. What? Because somebody know what you going through because they've been through it. Now, sometimes our pride, sometimes our own guilt, sometimes our own selfishness, sometimes our own arrogance will not let us call on someone who knows what we're going through. This is why I, I work, and I'm a truck driver. And every day there's a truck driver that I talk to, every day. And the reason why I talk to him every day because there's something he know about trucks that I don't know. There's something about that destination over there that he know that I don't know because I ain't been there yet. There's something about that road ahead that got that accident in it that I don't know because I haven't got there yet. So I called him and we, he called me and we talked. We constantly in communication about things that we have in common, places we're trying to go, places that we may have been. There's always somebody. You're never alone. So God told him, he said, and take the rod and gather the assembly together, you and Aaron, your brother, and speak unto the rock before their eyes. And listen to what God told Moses to do. How many times mom and dad told you to do something you said, hey, yeah, you okay. And you don't do it. Mm -hmm. There's a story in the Bible with two sons. And he told, father told one son, so look, I need you to go, go and, and, and take care of this business. Go feed the cows. You know, go feed the animals. He said, okay. I go, he didn't go right then. You know? He told the other son, I said, I need you to go and feed the cow and go to Zane. He didn't go at all. He lied. He said, I'm going. <laughs> didn't go at all. But the first we told him to go, he went, but he went later. After the fight. But he didn't go. So he get a beef for going. You know, he did get a beef for going. He, you know, he didn't get a beef for going because he's going to be honest. But how many times your parents tell you to do something, you say you're going to do it, and then you know, they got to tell you to do it again. Or they tell you to do something, you do it and do it wrong. Because you... You got an attitude. You don't got upset because you didn't want to sweep the yard in the front plate. We had to sweep the yard, dirt road, dirt yard with sticks. You don't got mad because you don't want to do it in the front plate. So you do it, but you do it when you get ready to do it, or you do it wrong. Just to prove a point. I told you I didn't want to do it in the front plate. You know I know I do so and so and so. Well, this is what Moses did. Read on. And Moses took the rod. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. Now, when he said, oh, this is what I mean. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's let me back on me. And Aaron, brother, and speak to the rock before their eye. Now, the rock here represents Christ. That's what the rock represents, Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. This mm -hmm. represents the rock. So, Christ, the rock, the, that and, and what he would do at Calgary to redeem the fallen humanity. It had already been written of Smith that uh, typified the once for all sacrifice of Christ. When he said, hit that rock, we will, he's saying that the rock is Christ, mm -hmm. and Christ has already been crucified as a living sacrifice for all people. Why? Because it was in the God's future plan. We couldn't see it because we couldn't see tomorrow. Why? As we said earlier, because when tomorrow comes, it's today. But God had already put this stuff in plan. The hidden of the rock represented Christ himself. He hit the rock. He represented Christ. Now I want you to back up here now. He said, and God said to Moses, more, take the rod and assemble. Now listen to what he said. See, this, 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 this church, 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 listen to me. Pastor, listen to me. We have to take time to read the scripture and understand the scriptures. He said, and he said to Moses, said to Moses take the rod. Other word, take the stick. Other word, take the word. Take the rod. In this case, he had, Moses actually had a physical rod. He said, take the rod. Now, if you just said, well, God told Moses to take the rod, what did he do with it? He told him to hit the rock. Not so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you speak. Speak. S-P-E-A-K. Speak. Take the rod, but speak to the rock. Yes. And that's where we mess up at. If he didn't want to hit the rock, why couldn't he told him to hit the rod in the first place then? It ain't your business what why he told him to take it. Just told him he told him to take it. He said, take the rod, but yet he turned around and told him to speak to that rock. Now, now, read on. Read on. And he said, speak to the rock before their eyes. Speak before the people so they can see what's going on. Read on. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron... No, I'm sorry, babe. Back up. Back up to... Uh, 
Back up to uh, eight. I just read it. Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together. Mm -hmm. Thou and Aaron, thy brother, mm -hmm. and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. Mm -hmm. And it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. Okay, look at that now. He said, take the rod. Yes, take the rod. He said that. But he comes on <laughs> down, he said, uh, but he said, take the rod, and it shall give forth water. He said, take the rod, but speak to the rock before the eye, and it shall give forth his water, and you shall bring forth the water by the rock. You bring forth. And instead of saying, what is it? What is it? He said, he said, take the rod, but speak to the rock. Take the rod, but speak to the rock. Take the rod, but speak to the rock. Take your weapon with you, but that don't mean you got to use it all the time. Your physical weapon, you don't always have to use it. Use some common sense. Even though you got it, use common sense. The best warfare is in the person who really win the war is the person who really never fire a gun. War is not won on the battlefield. War is won in the battle room. The meeting room. Where you sit down and you make preparation. You plan the thing out. That's where you win the wars at. Not on the battlefield. Football. You go into your meeting room. You go into practice. You practice. You get in your meeting room. You do all this. You see what you're going to do. Then you get out on the battlefield. And if you don't execute what you learned or did in the meeting room, you're going to lose the war. You're gonna lose the battle. You have to execute. And we said they need to get rid of the coach, get rid of the coach because he don't need to do it. No, it's not the coach. It's the players who must execute what has been put down by the coach. It's not God. It's the people who do not execute what God has given them. It's we when we do not live by, walk by, talk by, speak by the words that God give us. When we do not live by the word that He's given us, it's not God. God is a great commander, the great general. Jesus is the best commander that ever walked the earth. He will always lead you to victory. Your season is here. This is your season. But being disobedient will disrupt your season. So right here we see Moses. Moses was in a good season, but Moses' season just got disrupted. Because God told Moses, I want you to take your rod, true enough, but I don't want you to hit the rock. I want you to speak to the rock. Mm. But what did Moses do? He hit it. He hit it. Now, listen. Back in earlier chapters, God had told Moses to take his rod and hit the rock. Spoke, 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 stroke, hit it. Hit the rock. He told him, hit the rock. So Moses hit the rock. So now when it comes the second time around, God said, take your rock. What did Moses do? He hit the rock. In other words, Moses did what he thought God wanted him to do. Instead of being obedient and listening to what God was saying. And oftentimes we do the same thing. We do what we think is right. Mm -hmm. Instead of sitting back and doing a rationalization of stuff and then proceeding to do what seems to be right. Mm -hmm. Because all the elements and stuff is lining up to make it seem to be right. And when you do it like that, if something go wrong, you just say, it was God's plan. It wasn't time. So Moses, disobedient, disrupt his season. Read on. And then you know the thing about that story, but you know the thing about God is here. See, God, even though sometimes you do something, something wrong, God will still work with you. He, he still will work with you. So one thing about it, we can't give up all the time. When things don't go our way, we just can't give up. Because God will still work with us. He won't chop our head off right off the bat. But he will whip us. Read on. <coughs> yeah, verse 9. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Mm. And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. Twice. 
And the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank. Mm -hmm. And their beasts also. And the beasts also. And Moses, and this was Moses, Moses was bad. Sometimes, somehow, no, he just didn't call an attitude for some reason. <laughs> See, when we we, 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 we face with the thing, we just get an attitude. We just, sometimes we get an attitude and the people don't know why we got an attitude. We get a, Moses got an attitude, he said, now he said unto them, now, uh, uh, here now, you rebels, <laughs> must we fetch you water out of the rock? Do we got to do everything for you? Can't you do something for yourself? Pray for me, Pastor. Okay, well, you ever thought about praying for yourself? I can pray for you. Got no problem there. But you ever thought about praying for yourself? Sometimes. Yes. Pray for yourself sometimes. And see how it works. See how it feels. See, because if you pray for yourself, then I pray with you and we join mm. that thing together. Oh, Lord, have mercy. What kind of power mm. we got? But if you never pray for yourself, but every day you run, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. I'm just going through some pray for me, pray for me. You know, it's, it's uh, I'm doing me. I'm just going through you know, that. Pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. When do you pray for yourself? Yes, Most say you rebels. And then he said, and Moses lift up his hand with, with, the, with the rock, and uh, uh, lift up his hand, and with the rod, he spoke the rock twice. Not one time, but twice. Twice. It wasn't one time that you disobeyed God, doing the same thing. But you turn around and do it again, the same thing. Daddy said, don't do that. You did it again. He whooped you, you did it. You did it, okay. And turn around and do the same thing. Matter of fact, the first time he didn't whoop you. He just said, just don't do it no more. You turn around and do it again. I got away with it, so I'm going to do it again. <laughs> and this time when you did it again, because you got away with it the first time, you did it again, and look what happened. Daddy told you off. Well, God is the same way because God is your heavenly father. Mm -hmm. And God said one thing. He said, you, you, your earthly father, you give praise, so you rejoice. But when your heavenly father chastised, you get mad. And you want to stop going to church. And you want to stop praying. You want to stop smiling. You want to stop saying good morning. But the Lord told him to speak to the rock. Not smite the rock. He said, speak to the rock. Not smite the rock or not hit the rock. To, to, to smite the rock. In essence, greatly obligated the type. The rock smite in repetition was a typical of a, a, a type of sacrifice, rather. It was a type of sacrifice of Christ. Now, if God told you to speak to it, and Christ being that rock, what you did was well, when you hit that rock twice, hit you hit that. twice. Mm -hmm. You hit Christ. Why do we crucify Christ over and over and over again? Mm. Why do we do it? And that's what we do. Mm. <laughs> of the, uh, the type of a crucifixion of Christ on the cross, to smite the rock again, in essence, started stated that the first sacrifice was insufficient. Why do we crucify Christ all over again? You're doing it again. You're hitting the rock again, so you're crucifying Christ all over again. Say, the first time Christ was crucified, it didn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. This is what this is signifying. Listen to me, Pastor. This is what it's to signify. I know you probably never <laughs> looked at it this way, and your Bible said, Pastor, the Lord's crazy. He don't know what he's talking about. But God be my witness. And I answer mm -hmm. God. In essence, stated that the first crucifixion was insufficient and would have to be repeated. Christ being crucified all over again. And we do do it. We, we constantly do it. I can see God sitting up there just looking down and just crying. saying, look what they're doing. Just killing my son over and over and over again. Why did I do it? He said one time, he said, it repented me that I have made man. Because the ways of man is right in his own eyes. And anything he can conceive in his heart, he'll do it. It repented me that I made man. Right there in his death. Right there, right there in his death. Remember. And. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and he goes on to say, And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. We should not mistake the blessing of the Lord for an approval uh, 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 for the approval of the Lord that is always a mistake. Uh, let me read this again. We should not mistake the blessings of the Lord for the approval of the Lord that is always a mistake. We should never take the blessings of God and think that it is always an approval. Why? Why? What am I saying? God will bless you with stuff. He will let a lot of things to come your way. But that don't mean he approves of the way you got it. 
You may get it, but that don't mean God approve of it. Huh? You need to say that again. God will allow things to come your way. Yeah, let them blessings come your way. But that don't mean he's always approved of it. I saw a movie one day. They had some chemicals in there and some people was fighting in the movie and a lot of them end up going in another direction. But the last one that was standing, he took the benefits of the spoil and went on off with it. Like, oh, I can look at me, I just got blessed. But what he failed to understand, you may have the benefits of that spoil and you're going off, but that don't mean God approved. Because those benefits, those spoils that you took off, they still belong to somebody else. That's right. They still belong to somebody else. And sooner or later, you're going to have to reap the reaper, pay the price. So, so just because you're being blessed to get certain things, don't mean God approved of it. That don't mean he approved of it. You get a new job, say, oh, the Lord blessed with this job, he blessed with the job, and then two days later, you quit the job. God didn't approve it in the first place. He wasn't God. So, read on, read on down here into this, 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 this next verse, verse 12. Now, remember now, again, he said, speak to the rock. Do not spite. He didn't say don't spite the rock. He said speak to the rock. Now, read verse 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore ye shall not bring this congregation unto the land which I have given them. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron. And, and I'm gonna, let, me, let me tell you a little bit about Aaron. Mm -hmm. See, Aaron was Moses' brother. In other words, Aaron is your sidekick. <laughs> so you always got your little sidekick. You do this right here on that show. Do, you don't do this here. No, don't do that. Do, do this right here. Don't do that. You always got the sidekick. So Aaron was the sidekick. Now, if you, if, if, if you, if you read some more stuff later on down the road and see some things going on the road, you know that Aaron built that golden calf. <laughs> but anyway, they told me to do it, so I did. But you knew better. So you always got this sidekick in there that's talking mm -hmm. about this yap, yap, yapping to you. So, and the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Because you believe me not. Because I told you to speak to the rock, but yet you stroke the rock or you hit the rock. You will not lead the children of Israel into the land in which I promised. Now, he said, you won't lead them. He said, they wouldn't go. He didn't say you wouldn't get your blessing, but he said you might not you had to get this blessing where you thought you was gonna get it. He told Moses, you will not go over into the land of promise. Disobedient will disrupt your season. Moses' season had just been disrupted. You remember the famous speaker? I believe they call him MLK. Mm -hmm. so I have a dream. And he said, and I've been to the mountaintop, and I looked over, and I seen the promised land. And he said, I may not get that with you, but I promise you that we as a people will get to the promised land. Moses went over, and he looked, and he seen, but he couldn't go into it. So I can hear him saying now, old children of Israel, I see the promised land. Now, I can't go in there with you because I was disobedient. <laughs> but I want you to know you will get to the promised land, and if I'm blessed by God, You'll see me along the way. Mm -hmm. I can hear Moses say it now. I messed up. God told me to speak to the rock and I stroked the rock. But mm -hmm. I seen the promised land. Disobedience will disrupt your season. Moses' season was disrupted because of his disobedience to God. Mm -hmm. And what seemed to me or what seemed to us is just something simple. To God, it's a matter of your spiritual life or your spiritual death. And it also be a matter of your physical life and your physical death. This is your season. But being disobedient will disrupt your season. Church, we have a lot, I had, I had some, we had some more scriptures that we want to go over to and, and put down there. But this thing right here is really good. It's really good. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to thank God for what we have achieved just for this morning. And we are going to allow God to bless us in the, uh, this week. And, and we're going to come back next week. And, and uh, we're going to start back over with part two.
uh, this is your Caesar, but being disobedient will disrupt, disrupt your Caesar. If that's okay with you, it's okay with us. Next week, God bless us, we're going to come back and we're going to start with, we're going to call this part two, and we'll be starting mm -hmm. with from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 22. God bless you. We love you. We're hoping that today you receive something good from the word of God. Today, we'll bless you. I know it has been a blessing to us here at the Steel Field Northern Ministry. Mm. And we're sorry for uh, a few weeks that we wasn't able to be with you. Some things that was really going on in our lives that uh, we couldn't get with you. Well, we pray that you still was able to go back and look at all some of the pre previous services mm. that we had brought forth. And for those of you who continue to, to text us and to call us about the Steel Field Northern Ministry, <laughs> about the things that has been doing for you in your life, helping you out and being a blessing to you, and asking us to just keep the messages coming. We hear you, we love you, and we will do just that as God has blessed us to do so. So until we're able to get together next week, uh, this is Pastor Law and family from the Steer for Your Northern Ministry. God bless you. We love you. When things are going bad, what do we do? Put a praise on it. And when things are going good, what do we do? We put a praise on it. 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 God bless you. Amen.